you who is a teacher or was a teacher, please raise your hands. How many times have you had a student come to you and ask, Can you please open the classroom and be with us until 2 a.m.? <laughs> oh, beg you. Can I please have another project to do? Well, <laughs> from your faces, I can tell this didn't happen a lot. Probably you are more familiar with a teenager that is stuck in his smartphone, selfish, selfie, lazy, doesn't do anything if not pushed how to do it, wishes to become a star overnight, to be famous without working hard. Well, on the other hand, we look at you, teachers, thinking you're outdated, your materials are irrelevant, boring, and you just push us towards grades better than actual learning. And the system? It haven't really changed since the 1900s. As you can see, the way we study and teach needs to change. For many years, as a physics teacher, I looked for ways to make my students learn with passion, with enthusiasm, from their own inner motivation. Sometimes I succeeded more and sometimes less. And here, in our science center, we found a wonderful way to make students learn science and technology with passion and we want to share it with you. You probably haven't heard about Yerucham, a small town in the middle of the Israeli Negev desert, a typical periphery town where we both come from. But you may have heard about the movie, Turn Left at the End of the World. <laughs> That movie was made based on our town and shows what the Israeli perception of Yerucham was. But it is now changing. We have found a magic recipe to inspire kids to learn science and technology from their own will. And we know it works because 30% of the kids in Yerucham, from kindergarten till high school, are into it. Robotics. In the next few minutes, we want to share with you the six ingredients of our recipe. The first ingredient is hands-on learning. You don't read about, speak about, think about, but rather you make things with your own hands. You cut, wire, screw, you program, you design, and you make the robot itself. Given the growing percentage of students with ADHD, this kind of learning environment can be the ideal place for them. Even in the ordinary class, we have to struggle every day and sometimes every minute to catch the students' attention. And here, They are so busy that they can't spend hours without even noticing the time has passed. We start to work every day at 4 p.m., right back from school. And we stay in, you know, until 11 p.m. We even have our own traditions, such as every weekend buying the first baked bread at 4 a.m. from the bakery, eating it together, and continuing to work until sunrise. The second ingredient is autonomy. The students have their own place, the workshop, and they manage it themselves. They take responsibility for the various stages of the process. There are no teachers anymore, but mentors. This allows students who usually don't learn at school because, oh, it's boring, or it's difficult to learn and to accomplish their own goals, the ones they decide they want to accomplish. For example, one of my good friends and a 10th grader in the team, he, let's put it this way, he doesn't really fit school. His grades are low, and if you ask any of his teachers to say any positive things about him as a student, they wouldn't have had much to say. But when we got a small 3D printer to the workshop, he decided to learn computer-aided design so he could help in the team and 3D print us parts to the robot. He became so professional at this CAD program that he taught other team members the program as well, and together they set themselves a mission to model the entire robot. And so they did. This was his first accomplishment ever, and without him and the hard work he put into learning this CAD program, we wouldn't have been able to build this awesome robot that you will now see.
each other is common in the robotic teams. Being each other's teacher gives the responsibility for the learning process to the students themselves. The team members don't teach only their friends, but they become mentors to the younger students as well. Every teacher knows that whenever he is going to teach a new subject, he has to know it much better than his students, and his understanding becomes much deeper. When I first joined the team, one of the guys taught me how to work with power tools and how to work with wood, and I became a part of our building crew. Later, I started teaching the new team members how to work safely and professionally, and they became even better than me. Following that, I became the team captain and led my team into some great achievements, such as winning the Israeli Competition's Chairman's Award and winning the World Championship Judges Award. In professional language, this is called peer instruction and peer learning. And then there is the competition. The competition adds tension, adrenaline, and makes all the difference. We tried for a few years to teach robotics without competing, and it didn't take off. We joined the first robotics competition that makes robotics a sport-like competition, and since then, our team got better and better every year and acquired an international reputation among robotic teams. The competition requires you to meet standards, like a pianist that has to perform at least one concert every year. Look at her. Can you imagine any student so excited about solving an equation? <laughs> I call this alternative assessment. Another important factor of our program's success is that it offers the student the opportunity to see their future. Working closely with professional engineers who volunteer with the robotic teams give the student the opportunity to see how things are done in the real world. The engineers themselves become powerful role models for the students. Many of the kids my age don't dream of a future beyond high school or even dream of becoming professional high-tech people. But working closely with professional volunteering engineers opened a new horizon for us and widened our future picture of choices. And really, besides all that, the engineers themselves become so close to us that we even have a joint chat group with them and we talk with them all the time. The spicy ingredient that gives our recipe its unique flavor is the contribution to the community. It gives us goals and meaning. We believe that one should give back to the place that you came from and help you to grow to be what you are. We believe that giving back to the community can strengthen the connection of the younger generation to the town, to the community. We have some examples of this contribution to the community. This one is the Bimba project. The team decided to modify a motorized vehicle to fit the needs of kids in a special kindergarten. Those kids are aged one to three years old and they suffer from both motoric and vision disabilities and they are not able to move by themselves without the help of adults. So they don't learn space orientation skills. We decided to modify this Bimba, the toy car, so those kids could drive it and learn space orientation skills using it. One of the stories that came from the kindergarten is of a two-year-old girl. She has a very tough physiological disability and the only thing she can actively do is move her hand a little bit. But using the bimba, she's able to move from one place to the other and this changed her life. You can now see her in the following video and see how happy she is while driving the bimba. Using the skills and knowledge we gained in FRC, we put all our efforts into building this bimba. This is life-changing for her because in no other way she could have moved using only this little gesture she can do. But that was the first time she moved without the help of adults and this will not be her last. They contacted us from the network and they said, well, we have more kindergarten. We have one in Jerusalem, one in Petah Tikva, and another one in Beersheba that needs those cars. We built four more. So, now that I graduated from the team, do you have any projects for me? Yes. I want you to stay involved and to be a young mentor of the team. And I want you to share your experience with our audience and to give them their mission. But remember, we have less than one minute. Well, 
That's easy. Robotics has changed my life. It has changed the lives of kids in my town. It has changed the way we study and teach in Yerucham. So it was done in Yerucham. It was done in several municipalities following us. It could be done anywhere. And now it is your turn to make it happen.